Hi guys, in today's video we're going to take a look at what is the mole, the mole, molar mass, equations, an exam style question and finally a summary. So what is the mole? Well, it's incredibly difficult for scientists to count numbers of atoms accurately, and that's because of their tiny size. If you imagine trying to count the number of sand grains in a sand castle, it would be incredibly difficult. So in order to quantify the amount of substance, scientists use a measure called the mole. And no, it's not like the animal the mole. A mole is the amount of substance that contains the same number of atoms or particles as 12 grams of carbon-12, and that's an important definition. So let's take a closer look at the mole and the value it takes. The value of the mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That is a huge number, that's 602 sextillion. This number is known as Avogadro's constant, as it's proposed by a scientist called Avogadro, and it really is a huge number. If we think about having one mole of oxygen molecules, we'd have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 oxygen molecules. That's 602 sextillion. Just to put that in proportion for you, if we had one mole of soda cans, that's 602 sextillion soda cans, they would cover the earth to a depth of 200 miles. So that really puts into proportion how big the mole actually is. So now we've had a look at the mole, let's go ahead and have a look at molar mass. Molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance. Here I've drawn a diagram of three beakers containing one mole of three different elements. We have carbon, sulphur and copper. Now you can see that our one mole of carbon weighs 12 grams. Whereas one mole of sulphur weighs 32.1 and one mole of copper weighs 63.5. This is highlighting to us that although each of these beakers contains one mole of our substance, the mass of that mole varies from element to element. So what is our molar mass? Well, our molar mass takes the same value as the atomic molecular or formula mass. If we look at sodium, the relative atomic mass of sodium is 23. We know that over here. Therefore, the molar mass will also be 23. The units taken by our molar masses are grams per mole, which is written over here. So what are the equations that we can do with our number of moles, our mass and our molar mass? Well, it's an important equation that we'll use. And I like to remember my equations using these little triangles that we can rearrange. We have N to stand for the number of moles and that unit is the mole. We have M for mass, the unit is grams. And we have the molar mass down here, where the units we know are grams per mole. These types of triangles are really useful ways to remember your equations, allowing you to manipulate them. The way you use it is you cover up the letter that you're looking for, and you see the relationship of the other two letters. So for example, if we were looking for the number of moles, and we covered that up, we'd see that the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. The first question is a multiple choice question. It says when 0.22 grams of barium is added to water, how many moles of barium have been added? Essentially, what this question is asking us is, in 0.22 grams of barium, how many moles are there? So if we think about that triangle that we had in our previous slide, we had number of moles, mass, and molar mass. We want to find the number of moles, so we can cover that. So the equation we'll therefore be using is number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. So we know the mass is 0.22 grams. Mass is equal to 0.22 grams. We now need to find the molar mass of barium. And we can do that by having a look in our periodic table. If we take a look at our periodic table, we have barium over here with a molar mass of 137.33. So we can go ahead and write that in, 137.33. We can now substitute those values back into our equation. The number of moles is equal to 0.22 divided by 137.33. And what we get is we get 0.0016, which is equal to 16 times 10 to the minus 4. So the answer is therefore A. The second part of the question says, modern pencils contain graphite rather than lead. In a pencil containing 0.642 grams of pure graphite, a form of carbon, calculate the amount in mole of graphite. 
So this question is asking us to calculate the amount in moles of graphite and we know we have 0.642 grams of graphite. So we can go ahead and write in what we know. We know that the number of moles is what we want to find. The mass is 0.642 grams and we can look in our periodic table to find the molar mass of carbon. If we look in our periodic table we can see the molar mass of carbon is 12. So we can go ahead and write that into our calculation. So we can now use that triangle again. Number of moles, mass, and molar mass. Again, we want to work out the number of moles. So we're using the number of moles is equal to the mass over the molar mass. The mass being 0 0.642 and the molar mass being 12. To give us number of moles is 0 0.0535 moles. Now the final part of the question is asking us to use Avogadro's constant to calculate how many carbon atoms are present in our sample of graphite. So we know that we have 0 0.0535 moles of our graphite. And we know that Avogadro's constant is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. We know that there are this many atoms in one mole. So if we want to work out how many atoms there are in this many moles, we do 6.02 times 10 to the 23 multiplied by 0 0.0535, the number of moles that we have. And that will give us 3.22 times 10 to the 22. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials just click the snap of my smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.